some, the ones who stand in authority, you are a force to be reckoned with, a warrior unopposed. There are approximately 1.2 billion fathers on earth. So let's subtract the ones who never thought it well enough to stay, the ones who don't even bother to know their children's name. Matter of fact, the ones who don't even know they have a child to claim. So you are virtually one in a million. A uh, rare breed of sorts. There aren't many that can amount to your worth. You are a rose in the midst of concrete, a needle in a haystack, a king amongst peasants. You stand alone. So I fully understand, better yet, I thoroughly comprehend the importance of your throne. I say this with the utmost sincerity. More precisely, this is my apology for never taking the time to appreciate your position or recognize that you are obviously in tune to something that I'm yet to understand. So this is your day. Fathers, enjoy it. And my only hope is that you get to feel as great as you truly are. Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers in the house. And uh, I just want to quickly, uh, in a minute or two, just acknowledge uh, the presence of uh, the old grammarians in the house. Can we put our hands together for them? And uh, the reason that I came to do this is uh, many of them traveled far and wide to Houston for the convention that uh, we just had in the past few days. And we just want to recognize them. Can you all just stand up? And uh, we're going to pray for you. And uh, I just... I also want to say this, in the spirit that they, that they came, uh, many of them are as old as my mom. Uh, the, when I was on a conference call a, a few months back, uh, Professor Williams, we, we asked him, uh, when did you graduate from grammar school? And he said, 1952. So for about two minutes, we were all quiet. Because we were thinking, hey, I don't think we were born then. And Professor Adebonoju, I'm sure, is not very close behind, probably 1953 or thereabout. And they all look young like me. God will continue to uh, bless you and uh, increase you. And I will wish you Johnny Messi's back home. Amen. Hallelujah. Church, can I indulge you? Can we rise up, please, and stretch for our hands towards this men and women? Today is also Father's Day. I want us to begin to pronounce the blessings of God over them. Psalm 128 verse 1 says, Blessed is the man that fears the Lord and walks in his way. He says, When you eat the labor of your hands, you shall be happy and it shall be well with you. Your wife shall be like a fruitful vine in the very heart of your home. Your children shall be like olive plants around your house. Blessed is the man who fears the Lord. The Lord will bless you out of Zion. The Lord will bless you out of Zion. You will see the good of this land in the name of Jesus. You will see the good of Jerusalem in the name of Jesus. You will see your children's children in the mighty name of Jesus. The Bible says that the blessings of the Lord makes rich hearts no sorrow unto it. Therefore, every blessing the Lord has granted you shall bring you joy in the name of Jesus. See, as thou a man that walks diligently, he shall stand before kings and not before mean men. I decree that shall be your testimony in the name of Jesus. Amen. As you have come safely, the Almighty God will take you back safely. Amen. I cover you and your family with the blood of Jesus. Amen. I pronounce the blessings of Abraham over you. Amen. That you are blessed in the city. Amen. You are blessed in the country. Amen. Whatsoever you lay your hands on, let it be blessed from this moment in the name of Jesus. Amen. Isaiah chapter 60 verse 1 says, Arise, shine. Your light has come and the glory of the Lord God is upon you. Therefore, for the next season of your life, I decree unto you, arise and shine. Amen. The glory of the Lord will go before you in the name of Jesus. Amen. I cover everything that pertains to your home with the blood of Jesus. Amen. The Lord shall defend you. Amen. The Lord shall fight for you. Amen. The Bible says in Deuteronomy 5, 16, Honor your father and your mother, that it may be well with you in the land which the Lord has given you. Therefore, your children shall honor you all the days of your life. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Whatever you lay your hands on, let it prosper greatly in the name of Jesus. Amen. And finally, the word of the Lord over you is in Haggai 2.9. He says, For the glory of the latter temple shall be greater than the former. 
Therefore, I declare over you that your best years are ahead of you. In the name of Jesus. As you open your mouth, the Lord will fill it with wisdom. In the name of Jesus. You will never regret serving and knowing the Lord in Jesus' name. As we hear from you, it shall be good news. In the name of Jesus. Go forth in the might of the Almighty God. And we commit to you until we have the next con uh, convention next year that the Lord will keep you. The Lord bless you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. The Lord lift up a countenance of glory upon you. In the name of Jesus. Wherever you go, you shall be celebrated in the name of Jesus. So shall it be. In Jesus' wonderful name we have prayed. Hallelujah. Dr. K, you ought to say amen to that prayer too because you are from grammar school too. Amen? He's one of us. Um, the grammarians have something up their sleeve and I'm going to allow my brother, Twenty Goyer, to come on the pulpit and let him take care of that in a few minutes. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord, everyone. As soon as we, work, we walked into this, auditorium we felt welcome uh, we are not new to the house of the lord so uh, we're going to do this very quickly i'm going to call the uh, our patrons to come forward uh, professor debonoja and Prof uh, professor williams and the president Today is Happy Father's Day. Can you please turn around? Uh, we have uh, some little token to show appreciation for what the Houston group have done for us. Uh, they've done a lot of work to accommodate us. We've enjoyed ourselves. We've enjoyed ourselves. And I want to say thank you because it's not easy to put a convention together. Sleepless nights, phone calls, and everything. The headaches. We want to thank you. So, uh, Mr. President, I'm going to have uh, Professor Adebono George to present the awards. I'm going to call on the first recipient, uh, Dr. Otubushi, to come forward, please. Thank you for all the work you've done. We appreciate you.
And lastly, uh, we're honored to have the national president in our midst. We want to thank him for traveling far to grace this occasion. He's done a lot of work, he's a committed guy, determined, and he's consistent in what he does. And uh, to, today we're going to honor him with the top Missy Dominos Frostrap Award. And this is a national award that we don't joke about. So Mr. Tony, I can just with God in God. The Word of God says, greater is the end of the thing than the beginning thereof. The convention cannot go to the next year. It has to stop, and then we have to prepare for another year. For all of you that helped us out to make this a successful convention, we appreciate you. God bless you, and may the Lord continue to increase you. Amen. For the economies that are traveling, we wish you gentlemen, since we are cognizant of your time, so we decided to do this. But for those of you that would like to worship with, with us, please grace us with your presence. The Lord will bless you. At this point, I want us to relax as we welcome the drama team of House on the World to present. <laughs> Hold on, hold on. No rights. Being, you know of this they institution. They have no rights to stop me. You know of this I institution. Have no right to be here. You know you cannot. Every single right You to know be you here. cannot behave I like that here. What do you want to stop me? you want? What do you want? <sighs> For promotion comment needed from the east. From, not from the west. From, not from the south. Now listen, son. And generations are committed into your hands. Fathers, you cannot afford to fail him. When you fail him, you are fed those offsprings. You are fed those that are following you, those that are coming after you. You want to be promoted financially? Pay 
your tithe. You must pass your tent in tithing. You want compassion, fathers? You must pass your test in having compassion on others. You must pass your test to get promoted to the next level. Now this is the problem. There is a time frame. A time frame is given. And once you allow the time of grace to elude you, you can be sent out. Just like Adam and Eve. You can be sent out. Just like all those great people that failed. So you must make sure that you make use of your opportunity. As a father, Father, I have a decree in the name of Jesus. I am standing as an oracle of God this moment. The grace for you to pass, Father, Receive it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Everything that you have missed, every opportunity that you have missed due to your failure, may heaven restore them back unto you right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. But guess what, Father? You must pass. You must pass your test. And if you have been failing, you cannot be promoted. From now, be expecting these examinations. Once you drive out of here, you might be tested. If you fail, you might not be promoted. Somebody sitting beside you might need your help. If you fail, you may not be promoted. The examinations is right in your front. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We will pass this examination in the name of Jesus. We will stand to declare the wonderful works of God to his glory. None of us will fail God. In the name of Jesus. Amen. There is one thing about us pleasing God. But the better thing is that for God to be pleased with us. That will be our portion in the name of Jesus. Amen. The word of God says, be anxious for nothing. But it says in everything, in everything, by prayer and supplication, let us make our request known to God. Prayer answers everything. Let us stay with him in prayer and in God. Because we cannot do this in and of ourselves. We will fail if we try. May the Lord help us in the name of Jesus. Can you stand with me as we take this song? And our dear brother is going to bless us also. Hallelujah. <laughs> Take all the glory, all the glory, Almighty God. Take all the glory, all the glory, O Lord. Somebody sing. Take all the glory.
love your very nice to you in this house. Thank you for how you have started with us. Thank you for that which you are doing in the house. Thank you for the biblical instructions that you have given us. Thank you for empowering us to be able to adhere to your instruction. Almighty God, we heal this house into your hands right now. As your word comes, O Lord, we pray, O Lord, that you will make it a comprehensive equipment to change our hearts. Make my mouth like a pen of a ready writer. As I speak, Lord, talk to me. Touch the hearts of your children. Bring about a total change, the turnaround change in this house and in our hearts. Lord, we bless your holy name. We curse the root of any demonic interference. Anything that will not allow us to hear that which you desire for us to hear this morning. We curse the roots right now. We bind every force that is opposing that which the Lord wants his children to hear this morning. Holy Spirit, take absolute control. Take absolute control, Lord. Be glorified. For we are prayed in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Today is just a, another reminder for us to honor all the fathers in the house and all the fathers that we know of, whether stepfathers, whether young fathers, but especially our spiritual father, the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. I want you to wave your hands and just give him a wave offering. Our Lord God, Jesus Christ, he is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. Without him, we are nothing. We thank him for waking up this morning. And we are glad that you are worshiping with us this morning. I pray that the Lord will open your hearts of understanding to be able to hear that which he wants you to hear this morning. I have titled this message by the grace of God, Conduct Yourselves as Men. And as I'll be speaking, I want to say that I'm not excluding the women. I pray that the Lord will give you an interpretation of that which God wants you to hear. We need wisdom in order to live in this world. Or else, we're just going to come like we were given birth to. We went to school, like some of us went to the CMS Grammar School. Then we started working. And then we started having children. And then we went to university for higher education. And then we get older. We grow gray hairs. And then, what next after that? Would it have been that we lived life? without knowing Jesus Christ, the Lord of Lords. He is the wisdom, and is all we need. I want us to read a Bible passage from Proverbs 4, verses 1 through 13. I might stop it as led by the Holy Spirit. He says, Hear, my sons, the instruction of a father, and attend to no understanding, for I give you good doctrine, Forsake ye not my law, for I was a son unto my father. Tender and only beloved in the sight of my mother. And he taught me and said unto me, Let thy heart retain my words, keep my commandments, and live. Get wisdom. Get wisdom. Get wisdom. Get understanding. Forget not. Neither decline from the words of my mouth. Forsake her not, and she will preserve thee. Love her, and she will keep thee. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. Yea, with all thy getting, get understanding. 
I wish to stop right there. I pray that the Lord will grant us understanding. Understanding is application of that which the Lord has taught you. To be able to apply it. To be able to know what to do and when to do it. You know, the word of God says in Micah 6, he said, Oh man, he has shown you that which is good. Oh man, he has shown you already what you're supposed to do. So to do justice, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with the God. And if you look at all those three things, all those things are action words. Because the three words, you must be able to do what God wants you to do before you exit this life. And I pray that for the fathers in the house, I pray that the Lord will make you good fathers. The Lord will make you excellent fathers. I would love to say the Lord will make you excellent mothers too. Mothers? Now, as I was thinking about this message, I want to make it as short as possible. I thought of the movie, The Godfather. And for some of you who's watched it before, just take this literally. The Godfather had a sequel too. And from everything from the first Godfather movie, we have Godfather 2, we have Godfather 3. All I'm trying to let you know in this situation is that for everything we fathers do, everything will be replicated in the life of our sons. And time will not let you escape it. The more I study this, the more I realize that we fathers have a lot of responsibilities in our hands. And I pray that the Lord will help us to own up to it. Yes. Now, you might not be able to see the one below. From Godfather, I put Godfather 3 or Godfather 2. For those of you who, who, watched, who watched the movie, you notice that whatever it is that happened, the killings and everything that happened in Godfather 1, same thing happened in 2. It happened in three. But what God wants us to be is a good father. A good father. In one of the statements that was made, if you could read that, it says, it's an old habit I spent my whole life trying not to be careless. Now, women don't get upset at this. I didn't say this. Colony or whatever his name said this. Women and children can afford to be careless. He said, it's not men. As we all know, that's not biblically correct. Because women should not be careless. And neither do children. May we not be careless in the name of Jesus. Now, I put that up there. So as to let us know that. In, even in Hollywood, for them to make statements like that. That men cannot, should not be careless. It is very profound. Very paramount that we lead by example. We must lead by example. And there's one thing to lead by example by just being in the house. There's another thing to lead by example by being physically present in the house. I want us to read John 1, 1 to 2 and verse 14 also. We must be physically present in the house. As the Lord help us to lead by example. We must prioritize our physical presence. There is one thing to be a father. And because you are in the house, you think you are a father. But if you have no connection of connecting your children and your wife and your family to God Almighty, then you are not doing what you are supposed to be doing. John 1. It's on the screen. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. Verse 14. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt amongst us, and we beheld His glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace 
and truth. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. And the Word was God. Look at the connection. Even with the Father. Even with Almighty God. Before He became flesh in connection to us. He had to become flesh so that He can be connected to us. For us fathers in the house, we have to prioritize being physically present in the house, brethren. You know, whatever you decide to do, you can always try as much as possible to mumble everything together and be, uh, I'll call it multitasking, and be everywhere at all times. But there is something, when you prioritize that on this one thing that you desire to do, you will do. That one thing, I put that up there. You must prioritize by being physically present with the children, with your family. Not just in playing with them, not just in spending time with them, but in studying of the word with them. So that their lives might be better. Not just better, but better than yours, as a matter of fact. If you see those pictures over there, the ones below, even while you are vacationing, even while you are in the picnic, he told me, you know, going on vacation is not the voice of God. What we can do is to intentionally make sure that we don't lose God. We carry God in our hearts. Amen? Amen. We have to be emotionally engaged. John 14, 15 through 17. The Bible says, if you love me, you will obey what I command. And I will ask the Father and he will give you another counselor to be with you forever. The spirit of truth. We have to be emotionally engaged with our family, with our families. Many of us, we do not even know what is going on in our families. All we, are, all we focus on is that we just want to provide for the family. We want to work from 7 a.m. till 10 p.m. By the time you get home, the children are asleep. Same rigor the next morning. Same thing the next day after that. And before you know it, like some of us, you are 50. You are 60. Yes, it is true that they said age is like putting up another dress of age. But I pray that that dress that we are putting up will give us opportunities to be able to recognize God and be Responsible fathers who will be physically engaged with the, with the family and emotionally engaged with the family and not abdicate their positions in the household. Some of us are busy running around, running up around businesses that we're not even supposed to be doing. I pray that the Lord will help us. Amen. Romans 8 29. He says, For those God for new, he also predestined to be conformed to the likeness of his son, that he might be the first born among many brothers. Romans 8 29. We have to constantly lead in our household spiritually. As time to tell you this, and I pray that I'm not bringing any confusion into your household. Men! You need to stand up and lead by example, spiritually. Amen. Yes, let me tell you the truth. Amen. Most of our women, they're very, very, you see that they're very, very spiritual. When we come for prayer meeting, only women. Before the service starts, only the women. It tells me something that most of us, even if they are home, how do we pray, men? We need to stand up and live spiritually. Don't wait for your wife to start calling you for prayers. She's not the leader. 
The Lord did not make her the leader of the house. The Lord did not make your wife the leader of your household. You should be the leader. You men, stand up, man up, and conduct yourselves as men. Conduct yourselves as men. It's over with. We not fight with each other. We compliment each other. But do not abdicate your position. Stand up and conduct yourselves. That's the target of the message. And we're going to see where that, where that came from. A wise man, I'll call him, he embarrassed, made a statement. He said, men are God's maker. Men are God's maker. The church is looking for better methods. But guess what? God is looking for better men. The church is looking for better methods. methods. But God is looking for better men. House of the world and all the fathers in the house who will be better men in the name of Jesus. Amen. When I saw that, it was so profound. We are God's methods. And I'm going to show you in the world. I'm going to take us through an Old Testament story of Eli. And I'm going to take another one of Saul with the Gideonites. And I pray that the Lord will grant you wisdom. He will grant you understanding this morning. Some of the things that I'm not saying, I pray that the Lord would impute and imbibe it in your spirit. Amen? Let's go to the first one. Second Samuel 21, 1 through 14. We're going to see the, the request of the Gideonites. And we'll read this. I want you to just flow with me. Amen? It says, Now there was a famine in the days of David for three years. Year after year, and David inquired of the Lord, and the Lord answered, It is because of Saul and his bloodthirsty heart, because he killed the Gibeonites. So the king called Gibeonites and spoke to them. Now the Gibeonites were not of the children of Israel, but of the remnant of the Amorites. The children of Israel had full protection to them, but Saul, Everybody say Saul. A man, a father. Sought to kill them. In his zeal for the children of Israel and Judah. Therefore, David said to the Gideonites, What shall I do for you? And with what shall I make atonement? That you may bless the inheritance of the Lord. That's another father, David. Okay? Now look at the difference between these two fathers. And the Gideonites said to him, We will have no silver, no gold from Saul, or from his house, nor shall you kill any man in Israel for us. So he said, Whatever you say, I will do for you. Whatever you say, I will do for you. Then they answered, The king, As for the man who consumed us and plotted against us, that we should be destroyed from the remaining in any of the territories of Israel. That seven men of his descendants, seven men of the descendants of Saul, that father who killed the Gibeonites, seven men of his descendants, after he had called, let them be delivered to us. And we will hang them before the Lord in Gibeah or Saul, so, whom the Lord chose. And the king said, I will give them. I will give them. But the king spared Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, because of the Lord's hope. This had to do with David. I want you to look at both of them, Saul and David. That was between them, between David and Jonathan. The son of Saul. So the king took Amoni and Mephibosheth, the two sons of Rizpah, the daughters of Anne, whom she brought to Saul, and the five sons of Michael, the daughter of Saul, whom she brought up to for Abraham, the son of the Basilai and Meholatan. Meholatan. Now let's just stop there. Whatever it is, if you look at Joshua chapter 9. There was an oath 
that was made regarding the Gibeonites. And so, in his zeal, in his lack of understanding, that's why I prayed for us this morning that may the Lord grant us understanding. Amen? In his lack of understanding, they have made a treaty. But so, in his zeal for the Israelites, decided to kill the Gibeonites. It sounds like a small mistake, a minute mistake. But what came out of this was that David, on the other hand, who asked them that whatever it is that you want, I will give you. That's the most dangerous question to ask anybody. Now, when he asked them just that question, they asked for seven sons. And here I am thinking, seven sons, what did they have to do with it? For what Saul did? What did they have to do with it? Oh, obviously some theologians will say, oh yes, maybe they were there at that time, and they agreed, and they did this, they, well maybe they stood there, they didn't say anything. The Bible didn't tell us. But the truth of the matter, matter is that they had, they were not there. Saul did he committed this atrocity. And those seven men suffered it. Because they didn't give those seven men to them. And they hung them. Fathers, fathers, let's not be foolish. Let's not be frivolous in our actions. Whatever it is that we do now, we come here. Except by the redemption plan of Jesus. That is why many of us we need to give our lives to Christ. There was a treaty. It's not that he didn't know about it. It wasn't that he didn't know about it. He knew. The Bible says, do not be deceived. God is not mocked. God knows everything. He sees you in your closet when you are changing. <laughs> not only that, he sees your heart. He sees your heart. He sees you when you check out another woman that is not your wife. He sees you when you confess something from your other brother, other father, and you are wishing him evil. He sees you when you compete and say, I'm better than Steve, I'm better than Dr. Kerr, I'm better than this. He sees you when you make a covenant that you're going to serve this house, you're going to serve in this house. And you disappeared. Brethren, it's time to man up. It's time to stand up. It's time to be a man and conduct ourselves. I'm not exempted from this. Privilege to come and share this with us. I pray that the Lord grant us understanding in the name of Jesus. Whatsoever a man sows, that he will also reap. You can't escape it. But there's a caveat. And I put it up there. When you face with challenges, quickly seek the face of God. These things are challenges. And we're going to continue facing it every day until we see God. I pray that the Lord will help you to stand Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. You will not disappoint God. Amen. May you not disappoint God, man, Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's look at the story of Eli. Real quick. First Samuel, verse 4. We're all Bible scholars in this house, and I'm sure we've read this over and over again. First Samuel, chapter 4. Let's take it from verse 1. He says, And the word of Samuel came to all Israel. Now Israel went out to battle against the Philistines and encamped beside Ebenezer. And the Philistines camped and camped in Ephraim. Then the Philistines put themselves in battle array against Israel. And when they joined the battle, Israel was defeated by the Philistines. Who killed about 
4,000 men of the army in the field. 4,000 men of the army in the field. And when the people had come into the camp, the elders of Israel said, Why has the Lord defeated us today? Before the Philistines. Let us bring the ark of the covenant of the Lord from Shiloh to us, that when it comes amongst us, it may save us from the hand of our enemies. When it comes amongst us, it may, it may save us from the hand of the enemies. So the people sent to Shiloh that they might bring from, the, from there the ark of the covenant of the Lord of hosts. Who dwells between the cherubim and the two sons of Kenan, Open and Phineas were there with the Ark of the Covenant of God. Open and Phineas. Every time I hear those names, something shivers in my body. And when the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord came into the camp, all the Israel shouted so loudly that the earth shook. Now, when the Philistines heard the noise of the shout, they said, What does the sound of this great shout in the camp of the Hebrews mean? Then they, missed, they understood that the ark of the Lord had come into the camp. The ark represents God. They understood. Even the enemies understood that the ark of the Lord had come into the, into the, into the camp. And that got them concerned. So the Philistines were afraid. They were afraid. So afraid. For they said, God has come into the camp. And they said, walk unto us. For such a thing had never happened before. Walk to us. Who will deliver us from the hand of this mighty God? These are the gods who struck the Egyptians with all the plagues in the wilderness. Be strong. And what? Can you read that with me? Loudly. Be strong and what? <laughs> Women, talk to the men. Be strong and look at them in the eye. <laughs> Say it. Be strong and look at them in the eye. Why are you not know to your husband? He knows. Pastor, why you can not yourself No. No. Be strong and conduct yourselves like men. You Christians, that you do not become servants of the Hebrews and they have been as they have been to you. He says, conduct yourself like men and fight. And fight. So the Philistines fought. And, the, and Israel was defeated. Israel was defeated. Again. Even with the ark of the Lord. It's as if I've never read this place before. Israel was defeated. And every man fled to his tent. There was a very great slaughter, and that fell Israel. How many? Thirty. Not four this time. Thirty thousand foot soldiers. Men missing. Thirty thousand foot soldiers. Verse eleven. Also, the ark of the ark of God was captured, and the two sons of Eli and Hophni and Phinehas died. The two sons of that father, Eli, a priest, a pastor, bishop, a bishop, maybe a G.O. His two sons died. I'm going to bring something out to you. The man, and then a man of Benjamin ran from the battle line the same day and came to Shiloh with his clothes torn and and death on his head. Now when he came, there was Eli sitting on the seat by the wayside watching. For his heart trembled for the ark of God. And when the man came into the city and told it, all the city cried out. When Eli heard the noise of this outcry, he said, what does this sound of this tumult mean? And the man came quickly and told Eli. Eli was 98 years old. And his eyes were so dim 
that he could not see. Then a man said to Eli, I am he who came from the battle, and I fled today from the battle line. And he said, what happened, my son? I'm sure you all know this. Verse 17. So the messenger answered and said, Israel has fled before the Philistines, and there had been a great slaughter among the people. Also your two sons, Ophini and Phineas, are dead, and the ark of God has been captured. Verse 18. Then it happened when he made the mention of the ark of God that Eli fell off the sea. Backward by the side of the gate and his neck was broken and he died for, for the man was old and dangerous fat and he had judged Israel for 40 years. This is for most of us that are pastors and men of God in the house. For the fact that he was a man of God, for the fact that he was a pastor, a priest, Eli advocated his position. Because if you read, if you read clearly in the passage before, Eli and his sons, or let's say his sons, they were lazy people. I wasn't surprised when they said the man was old and heavy. Heavy. And we've all read this, you know, that when the, they come in for sacrifice, we've read it that Eli's sons would take the choicest meat so they can eat. And not only that, if you're a fine woman, huh, you're in trouble. Go over there. Who we'll betide your husband to talk? Every spirit of orphanage and Phineas in our lives, in the lives of our son, we bind it, we cast those fruits right now in the name of Jesus. That's the spirit. But guess what? The Bible says, Eli, the father, never stopped them. He was silent about it. And if you notice something about that passage where 4,000 died, and then after they brought the act of God, now 30,000. How could that happen? You see, that's why I said, it is better to have God with you at all times. You don't have to be running to go and carry any act. In this day and age, God with you. In this day and age, if you show up anywhere, darkness, every form of darkness must disappear. The light shineth in darkness and darkness comprehended it now. That's the word of God. You are a light to nations. Everywhere you show up, they don't need to tell, you don't need to announce yourself as pastor. And as you can tell in this house, we call ourselves names. Who be sure she he just yes, Dr. K. Amen. <laughs> you know, we don't use pastors because we are ministers of the first day. Amen. You don't need to carry any title. When you go there, if your light is not shining as fathers in the household, I'm telling you now, and you are just part of the darkness, you see what happened to Eli? May it not happen to me in the name of Jesus. We have to take into consideration that our sons must be brought up in the way of the Lord. Proverbs 22, 6, it says, train up your child in the way that he should go, so that he wears home, not depart from it. You know, to train up a child means enough to let that child. Constantly, repetitively, that we must not get tired. We must continually teach these children. They must be better than us. And I pray that you all will be better than us in the name of Jesus. They must do better than us. Any father that is not wishing for his son or his daughter that not to do better than he's doing, you better check yourself. You must train them. You know something about investments? If you look at that passage, it says, 
Train up your child in the way that he's grown, so that when he's grown old, from the time that you train them to the time that they're grown, you're investing in, you're investing in their future. I love to invest. Why would you not invest in them? I tell Jeremiah, my son, my last one, he loves to play basketball. So now, I really do not have time to take him to all those games and all that. So I told the mother, I said, you have to help me. You have to miss Since Sammy is gone, he's taking him to basketball game. That's another kind of investment. Because I told him, I said, you're going to buy me a Rolls Royce by the time I'm 60. You hear me? He's not. He's so into NBA so much, and he says, Daddy, I'm going to be in the NBA. You're all witnesses. He's 11 years old now. Oh, yes, he's going to be in the NBA, amen? But we tell him, that's not all about life. But there's an investment. We must teach these children. Not just about basketball, not just about uh, social things. Teach them the way of the law. Do not abdicate yourself from the house. Be in the house. Get emotionally engaged with them. Lead them as spiritual examples. Let them see you. Let them see you that you are the one that is calling for prayer. Let them pop into your room one day and they see that you are the one praying. Let them not just be there because it's not so much of what we say, it's what we do. Fathers, let us rise this morning. Fathers only, let us rise. Let us rise. We have to man up. We have to conduct ourselves as men. If those people had sought the face of God from the beginning, they wouldn't have to be looking for the ark. They went trying to get the ark, thinking that the ark was the thing that's going to save them. But if you remember clearly in that passage, when she was going to have a baby, the name of the baby was God, he came. The spirit had departed from them already. That ark, a representation that they was just a wound. Nothing. Nothing in it. Nothing in it. This morning, I want, to, I want us to search our hearts. Because then, the word of God says, Unless the Lord build the house, the labor in vain shall build it. Unless the Lord keep the city, the worst man wicked but in vain. Rightfully so, that's the model of our school. Missy doing us prosper. prosper. Without God, what is in vain? Without God, what is in we can't do this in and of ourselves. We just have to commit. We just have to commit that, Lord, we're seeking your face. If you seek the face of God on time, early enough, you will not have to be running healthy, healthy, skeleton. The Lord Almighty will help us in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Let's lift up our hands. I'm going to do something. You're going to cry to God right now. Just these few seconds. In many ways, we have abdicated our positions spiritually, physically, materially, in a way, financially. We have abdicated. But the word of God says it is not of him that will, it, not of him that run, but of God who showed mercy. You can't do it by We can't do it by our own power. I want you to cry to God this morning. He said, Lord, help. We all have our own individual challenges. And one of us says, we're two or four gathered together in his name. There he is in the midst. He's in our midst. Cry unto God this morning. And ask God to help me. I'm asking God to help me. Because I know this great responsibility that is placed in my head, I can't do it on my own. My household alone is enough not to talk about the church. Almighty God, help. Help, Lord Jesus. We cry unto you this morning. We ask, O oh Lord, that you will enable us, O oh Lord. For every conflict that we are facing, O oh Lord, for all the challenges that we are facing, Holy Spirit, breathe newness into our lives, O oh Lord. Turn all these conflicts into announcements of your blessings in the name of Jesus. Lord, make us better men. Help us to conduct ourselves as men. Lord, Help us to man up. Holy Spirit, fill us with the newness of your life. Holy Spirit, you build in us the power to be able to lead. Holy Spirit, you fill us with wisdom. Because
because the word said wisdom is the principal thing. In all that get to get understanding, grant us understanding, Lord. Lord, we are examples of your faithfulness upon this earth. Spirit of the living God, we cry unto you this, this morning. We ask, oh Lord, that we will be picking up lights even in different places that we go. In our workplaces, in our homes, Amen. wherever we are, let our shining, our glossiness, oh Lord, let it not turn into loss. In the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit, empower us. Release your grace upon us. We can't do it. We know that we cannot do it. In and of ourselves, we will fail. We will fail. The preceding was brought to you by House on the Word, a spirit-led, word-centered worshiping family with a global focus. We are located at 13950 Schiller Road, Houston, Texas, 77082. Our web address is www.hotw.org. Our telephone number is 281-776-0000. 